round 19. And with just four matches remaining in 1992, the top five is anyone's guess. One thing is for certain, the Raiders won't be there. A loss to Brisbane, a godsend for those left in the hunt. The Steelers will be out to bury Canberra's hopes of a bright finish to the season, setting the scene for a classic neighbourly confrontation as the Baron of Bruce leads his troops against the high-flying Illawarra Steelers. Good afternoon and welcome to the Bruce Stadium. This round 19 clash, the Canberra Raiders taking on the Illawarra Steelers. It should be a game where the open football is played. One man who will be happy to see that is our commentator this afternoon, Rex Mossop. Yes, indeed. I will be very happy to see it because I've not been all that uh, happy with the, some of the football I've seen in certain rounds and certain clubs this uh, last couple of months. A little bit boring in parts and I hope that the Rugby League take notice of this and uh, do something about it. But anyway, getting back to today's game, I feel, and I was... Uh, coming down on the aeroplane today to cover this one and I heard the news that Bradley Clyde was playing and it's amazing how one player can turn my view of a game around, particularly this player, this Bradley Clyde. I believe he is one of the best players I've ever seen. That includes the Rapers and the Gazniers and all the other great players. Now, whether he's totally fit for this match is a very important point. The other news I heard was that Russell was out of the, uh, out of the Illawarra side and he's a very good and imaginative player for them. So just based on the fact that Bradley Clyde's available and I hope for a good open game, I'm going for the Canberra side to win it. Big grabs for Bradley Clyde on the sideline as usual. Michael Bolt. Yes, uh, unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to agree with Rex at this stage. It's a very tough game for the Steelers out here today. They have to win to stay in contention. If they can win today, they will move to outright second place. Unfortunately, the Steelers have had a little bit of a problem of late. It's uh, when they're expected to win, they've come under pressure and they can't come up with the goods. Hopefully today they might come through with the, uh, the win over Canberra Raiders. Well, Rex and I are going to take a very quick run up the stairs, sit back and enjoy the next 80 minutes of football. Well, now, the Illawarra Steelers side have, have uh, just come onto the field. We'll run quickly through the team for you. They've got David Riallo at uh, fullback. Uh, Rod Wishart, Brett Rodwell, Paul McGregor, Brendan O'Meara at the backs. Dale Fritz is the 5'8". Simon's the halfback. Steve Waddell, Dean Calloway and David Walsh constitute the front row. Craig Izzard and John Cross are uh, the second row and uh, Neil Pincinelli's in there as well. We'll just have to be sure which position they're playing in. And of course the Canberra Raiders side now being called out onto the field. Only the one change in the Raiders lineup today and that is... Scott Gale coming off the bench in place of Matthew Wood. The Raiders this afternoon fired up for a big performance. And the Raiders led out by their captain, Big Mal Meninga. Scored that devastating try against Brisbane last Friday night. Running through the Canberra team, Brett Mullins at fullback. The three quarters, Sean Hoppy, Meninga, Boyle and Croker. The halves are Gale and Stewart. In the forwards, Brad Clyde makes his return to football. David Ferner, Stephen Stone, Darren Fritz, Steve Walters at hooker and Paul Osborne. The referee today is Graham West. Well, Canberra will be running from left to right. The Illawarra side will be running in the red jerseys and white shorts from right to left. Illawarra will be kicking off. This is a game for uh, the Canberra side of pride only. They need to win in front of their supporters, which have diminished slightly down here. The, uh, obviously, the Canberra people like to see a winning side, and Canberra's been through some travail in the last month or so, six weeks or so. They've put down a few results that they should have gotten, but they're not in the uh, running for the final five. They are on uh, 16 points, and uh, they just need it for pride. Now, the other side, the Lawara, are in with a very, very good chance. They can leapfrog the uh, St George side, who lost yesterday by winning today and going to second place. Anyway, the kickoff's taken place. Stewart takes it nicely, about 10 metres out from his line, gives it away there to Hoppy. Hoppy, the uh, good three-quarter that they've uh, arrived with the uh, Canberra side, came up with him towards the start of this year. Here's Bradley Clyde on one of those magnificent surges of his, made an easy 10 metres there. Little tiny knock-on, I thought it dumped me half onto Malmeninga. Out to Hoppy, Hoppy's going up the sideline. He's got only about 30 metres to go. Gets a pass away. It was an awful pass. Dreadful pass. And I think the uh, Illawarra side have knocked on in attempting to uh, pick it up. But that pass went on the inside. It was a rough one, let me tell you. Yeah, a bad pass there from Sean Hoppy. Sean uh, did spill a couple of balls against Brisbane last week. Uh, 
Hands haven't been the best for him lately, but uh, spilling that ball there. The Raiders in a good spot, though, and now they win the feed. Ricky Stewart swings it out. Scott Gale. On to Mal Meninga. Meninga's in the centres. He's pushing off uh, his opponent who's come up and tried to tackle him. He's an enormous man. They still don't get him down, the two of them. Now Stewart goes around the blind side of the ruck. Gets it out there to number five, Jason Croker. Only about three metres out from the line. Don Ferner, straight and hard. His father's very pleased with him, I should say. Donny Fern uh, was a very good player himself. He's pleased with the way his son's coming on. And Ninga with a little grubber kick through. Three of the Steelers' backs running for it. Oh, yes, they should have gotten to that one. They overran it. That was silly. And uh, in haste, they went for it. And unfortunately for them, they overran it. Well, that's the second ball we've seen Illawarra spill. Now Michael Bolt on the sideline. They have been slow starters in recent weeks. This week looks to be no different. Yeah, they've certainly been very tentative in the way they get into the games. They come back very well in the second half, but you can't let Canberra get a, a go in this game. If they get a taste of the uh, the lead, they will take it all the way. Out there to uh, David Boyle. Boyle straightens the attack up. Bradley Clyde's gone to the, uh, the side of the ruck with uh, Stewart. They're only about eight metres out from the line now. On there to big Darren Fritz, and he surges at the line. Magnificent specimen, this fellow, well over six feet, and it's got to be 17 stone. Passes back on the inside to number eight. Is he there? No, Paul Osborne was trying desperately. And the ball knocked out of the dummy half's hands. It will be a penalty to uh, the Canberra Steelers, the Canberra Raiders, because the ball was knocked out of the dummy half's hands. Darren Fritz putting on a bit of a spurt near the line there. Of course, Darren Fritz is being widely tipped as uh, being chosen into that World Cup squad, which leaves to head off to Great Britain at the end of the year. Fritz, he's been with the Raiders now for a couple of seasons. He's come on very well. Uh, he played in the shadows of Glenn Lazarus through 1991. And uh, this season, it's really been up to him to run the show from up front. Well, let me just say, in that context with uh, Fritz, obvious, it's obvious to anyone that sees him, he's a big fellow. He's enormous. Uh, they've got a great physique and a uh, very powerful man. So Bob Fulton, the Australian Rugby League coach and, and a selector as well, uh, would be uh, of the opinion that he would be a very good match for uh, Surinan, Geyer or anyone else that they might like to take away on that tour. He likes the big fellas. Well, this kick by Ferner will be taken from about uh, a metre in from the, uh, the quarter. And about 11 metres in from the sideline. Doesn't appear to be any breeze down uh, there. Having a good look at it. One of the round-the-corner style of kickers. Moves in now. He's got it. Canberra go to a two points to nil lead. <laughs> Monday night at the movies, all the action you can handle. Boards, don't hit that. Starting off at 8.30. Bruce Lee. In the original number one action blockbuster. Don't think. Feel. Enter the dragon. Then double the excitement. Jean-Claude Van Damme. In the television premiere. Black Eagle. The big ones coming your way. Enter the dragon and Black Eagle. Monday from 8.30 on Wind Television. Max Factor creates impact with bold, rich colour. Moisture rich lipstick fills your lips with incredible colour. Colour saturated with moisture. Moisture rich lipstick from Max Factor International. Impact by Max Factor. No, Regis, all this styling really damages my hair. No, not with Sunsilk Complete Care. A shampoo, conditioner, and most importantly, a treatment all in one bottle. Sunsilk Complete Care contains a protein treatment that encircles your hair for effective protection. Now, even when you're not around, I'll still have Complete Care. For soft, shiny hair that's protected, Sunsilk Complete Care, all in one bottle. You've been doing the exercises. Hmm. Any sign of improvement? Well, I can't see it. It's just as noticeable. Mm. The only option, really, is surgery. Surgery? 
It's quite simple. You can tighten that weak muscle and the eye will straighten. Mm. How soon, Doctor? Well, it is elective. We can book her in and uh, wait. Oh, I feel so helpless. I am sorry. Well, it is elective. We can book her in and uh, wait. I don't want to wait. We're in MBF, you know. Oh, well, we'll organise it straight away. Good. Both these delicious meals use lean pork cuts from the 13 approved by the National Heart Foundation. New fashioned pork, the other white meat. Take a glass of pure, fresh milk. A banana? Whiz it for as long as it takes to say, Hi, Mom, I'm home. And you have a delicious banana smoothie. Pure, fresh milk. Clint Eastwood is Dirty Harry. For the first time ever, four big movies in one action-shattering week. Wednesday night, Dirty Harry the Movie. Do I feel lucky? Once you've met him... Well, do you, punk? You'll never forget. Callahan. And then, the action classic Magnum Force. Saturday night, the legend lives on in The Enforcer. Remember me? Followed by a special adult extended version... Go ahead. ...of sudden impact. Make my day. Dirty Harry's best begin Wednesday on Win Television. 1992, David Ferner has been a real fine for the Raiders. Still to sign with the club, we believe, possibly sometime early this week. Ferner will put pen to paper and stay with the Canberra side. He has had plenty of offers, though, from interstate Rex. He'd be a player that uh, a lot of Sydney clubs would love to have. Indeed, yes. A lot of players will be making moves in the next few months. All right, let's get back to the football here with the Canberra side in possession from the kickoff, only about 13 metres out. Here again, Clyde surging forward. He does, does it all well. I don't want to make it sound like a, a Clyde commercial, but uh, he does everything very well. He's uh, uh, always looking for work when the hard yak is on. And also he's that, uh, a brilliant runner. Towering kick by Stewart goes way over the head of uh, David Riolo. He's fielded it now about 15 metres out from his line. Nicely tackled right round the boot tops there by David Boyle. Ron Wishart goes for a little sprint up the side. They're always looking for the, the weak side, the, the blind side, which is pretty cluey. Way to travel, McGregor. Got a pass on to Rodwell. Rodwell driven sideways there. Bradley Clive was the tackler, one of them. What? And now it's uh, Waddell's turn to take it forward. Michael Boldo is uh, reading an article about Rod Wishart during the week. Uh, a couple of discs that... Uh, a run play, something that uh, occurred at, at birth or when he was a youngster, um, it's, it's apparently kept him off the weights. Yes, it certainly has. And the, what's been diagnosed is that the lower part of his disc is affecting his hamstring and that's been the, the source of the problems. Because he's been, he's a very muscular fellow and he's been doing so many weights, that's uh, the combination of both is put, putting more pressure on the discs and therefore the hamstrings are uh, causing him so many problems. So it's off the weights for Wishy for a while. All right, well, let's have a look at Darren Fritz going up the blind side of the ruck. Always a good side to run if you're a big fella, because you usually find the players that are looking for a rest and defence slip out of the blind side. Good, strong head-on defence there. Dale Fritz was one of the tacklers. Osborne, the former St George player with the Canberra side now, goes forward a few yards. Got ball skills. A little bit of a tear away. Oh, there's a bad kick from Stewart. It went backwards. It's gone back about five yards. He doesn't take it. The ball ricochets to Illawarra. It's come out there to Brendan O'Mara. And he's tackled on the halfway line. Well, I suggest that Stewart cut that one out of his repertoire. Well, it's one of the rare times we've seen Ricky Stewart put a kick in and it actually goes backwards like that. Stewart uh, normally very good with the kicking. Well, the Illawarra side are taking the odds to hitting the ball uh, with, from the dummy half right on the, on the line. Uh, on the demarcation line, and uh, that's always fraught with danger. A uh, couple of little passes there in the last couple of sequences that uh, could have been ruled forward by the uh, the referee had he felt disposed. Well, Hoppy came, but he came much too late. Stewart was there, the ball was in his hands. He was almost pleading with Hoppy to come sooner on the blind side. The, the opening had been created, but they go now to the open side. 
from Ferner again. Tackled right on the halfway line. Ball is a dummy half. Got it away there to Fritz. Fritz is about five metres into Illawarra territory. They lead by two points to nil. Penalty goal to Don Ferner. Gale. At the Stewart, little chip over the top. This is a good one if the bounce is right. It's not. Oh, it's uh, taken beautifully by Riolo. Riolo's gone very nicely. Tackled 10 metres into Canberra's line. Simon. Away to Dale Fritz. Out of McGregor. McGregor over a good, strong surge. Takes play up to within 10 metres of the uh, Canberra quarter. Pichinelli. The man really responsible for the try that won the game against Newcastle. Izzard. Oh, there's one put down by Waddell that uh, could have led to a try. The pass looked okay. The referees had to rule uh, it was knocked forward. Had a good opportunity there. What did you think of that one, Mike? Well, of course, uh, John Cross trying to get the ball away there. And uh, you'll see the pass went, a <laughs> went astray. Steve Waddell who spilled it forward. Illawarra in a great position there. One thing that uh, Illawarra do look to be doing, and they, they're trying to run that ball around the halves area. Canberra were very slow in their market defence last week against Brisbane, and that's an area that no doubt uh, they've been working on a bit this week. Tim Sheens would have brought it to their attention. They were very slow around the marker area. Every time Brisbane did get the ball in that game last week too, they did hit the vantage line, so no doubt it's an area that uh, they'll hope to tidy up on today. Now, this is Gale with the ball. Scott Gale, a, uh, a mercurial player, a player that can score all sorts of tries, mostly from the use of the kick and chase. But uh, he's had a lot of clubs and he's probably uh, maybe just lost a little bit of enthusiasm for the game. Stewart now with a long trajectory kick downfield. It's going to bounce that badly for him. Bounces all right for Riolo. Fullback takes play over the quarter line. Brendan O'Mara, the dummy half, away there to Brett Rodwell. Strapping big centre who plays in the headgear. Wishart running from dummy half. Midway between the quarter and the halfway line. And David Walsh lost the ball forward, I think. Lost it in the tackle. They've just got to guard their possession a little bit more than they are. Michael Bolt, what do you think? Yes, uh, four times now in, uh, in the first lot of three tackles in the, the rucks, they've uh, dropped the ball. It's certainly not the way to play Canberra. You can't give them the ball, the ball back. One thing I have noticed, Rex, is that John Simon is playing up in the defence. We've seen Ricky Stewart already uh, bring off a, uh, a chip kick and that bomb, so they must have spotted it fairly early. All right, well, we're back to the action now with Scott Gale to his feet and playing it back to Stewart. Back on the inside there to Stone, who's a tear away. I've not seen this fellow before. Here's Dale Fritz running strongly. A good, strong surge. I think he got a bit of a clout in the jaw there for his pains too, but ignored it. Here's Gale with a kick over the top. Trying into the... Uh, well, he's going very close to the line. Oh, yes. Well, it was always going to be a, a kick that just a fraction too long. It was the wrong side of the corner flag, but a very good uh, kick in the context of where it was kicked from, about 40 metres out. It's only missed its objective by maybe a metre. And of course, uh, Riolo having to run that ball over the in goal area there, and uh, Illawarra now to return the ball from underneath their own sticks. Canberra looked very good in this early part of the game. They're certainly uh, committed. And as team, Tim Sheen said during the week, they've really got nothing to lose as far as 1992 is concerned, and they will throw the ball around too. Waiting on the drop kick to come from Simon. Still a bad length up around the halfway line. Onto Stewart. Gives it to Bradley Clyde, the workhorse. That last pace before the defence comes to him always is to straighten. He straightens the attack, goes straight and hard. The first-class player. Walters, a dummy half away to Osborne. That looked like a forward pass to me. Gets it back on the inside to Stone. Stone back to Walters. Walters gets it away there to Ferner. Ferner onto Stewart. Out to Meninga. Standing out in the centre. Switched it away to Stewart. Stewart running nicely. Lobs a pass over the top. Got it there to uh, Brett Mullins. Mullins makes a big grab and he's busted the defence. He's going to score a very good try. Oh, what a beautiful try. What a great weave. Brett Mullins, a fantastic try for the Canberra Raiders side. Put on the pace, step round three men. And has gone in in the corner to make it 6 0. Of course, as I was mentioning, the Canberra Raiders are very keen to throw the ball around. Here we see Stewart running wide. 
fends off one, pops the pass across the top. Mullins stepping back on the inside, round one, two, three. Sees the corner, he's got plenty of speed too, this boy. And just gets in inside there and puts the ball down for a Canberra four-pointer, a classic try to Brett Mullins. Yes, a, a, a try really that uh, his father, Bill Mullins, the former Eastern Suburbs winger and Australian winger, would have been very, very proud of it. It was beautifully taken. He certainly scored it. He didn't take the corner post until after the defence had come to him and pushed his body against it. A uh, little doubt about it. But he beat four defenders there in a most convincing run. But the, the ideal thing that came out of it from his point of view was that he showed a very good idea of using the great pace that he has. A splendid try. Bolter down on the sideline, that uh, Steelers camp. They look shell-shocked at the moment. They are. You know, Canberra's coming out and shooting everything at them at the moment. Uh, the, Ricky Stewart's directing play, a little overhead basketball pass, set that up for Mullins, and the defensive line wasn't straight. They came up in dribs and drabs. That's why he could weave his way through. Just waiting for this kick at goal by Ferner from a, uh, about a foot inside the sideline and perhaps a metre back from the... Uh, from the quarter line. Has a good, strong, hard look at the posts. Concentrating hard. Movement. Oh, it's a beautiful looking kick. It is a delight. It's hit the upright and bounced in. Hit the right hand side of the left hand upright and went to the right. A beautiful, it's almost as if he brought that one cannon off the cush. That was a superb kick, beautifully taken, and Canberra race away now. They lead by eight points to Illawarra's nil. Seven thirty Tuesday, kick up your heels and have a good time. With the show that'll have you laughing. Australia's funniest home video show. And at 8 o'clock... We were talking to Anna. What about? None of your business. Sex. The taboo topic that everyone's talking about. Oh, talking about boys? Hmm. I remember that look. Tracy's got a very long memory. And it's Anna who asks all the questions. Maybe I could send her to her room till she's 21. All together now. Unreal! 8 o'clock Tuesday on Wind Television. All your life you've been filling in forms. Sign here and you're off. Sign here, Sam. In triplicate. Sign here. <laughs> so you'd expect to do the same for a green slip. Get MMI's green slip with its very competitive rate and you won't have to fill in any forms. Just call. Amazing. 008 027 268. The amazingly simple green slip from MMI. The quality standard in insurance. Why are more taxpayers going to H&R Block? H&R Block know all the changes. They look after all the details and their work's guaranteed. I'll find all your rebates and deductions to make sure you get the biggest refund you're entitled to. They're great. I didn't need any cash up front. Block just deducted their fee from my refund. Come on in and see H&R Block. We're here to help you save on tax. Here's a real winner for your windows from Winning Blinds. The Magnificent 7 offer. Seven vertical blinds for $700 with a seven-year guarantee on tracking and seven days delivery. Winning Blinds Magnificent 7 offers the latest fabrics and colours and free measure and quote. Phone 239-1566 while stocks last. Seven Magnificent Vertical Blinds for $700 so don't miss out. Winning Blinds, Unit 142 Wollongong Street, Fishwick. When your windows wear Winning Blinds. Do you play Playhouse? Fun to build up on. <laughs> So you thought you couldn't afford a new car and a car phone. Think again. For a limited time only, Tara Ford is offering an Australian-made Motorola car phone, usually around $1,000 for just $99 with any purchase of any new or used vehicle. Everyone benefits with Tara Ford's quality cars, good deals and after-sale service. And now, with these bonus Motorola car phones at just $99, the choice couldn't be clearer. Test drive today. Tara Ford challenge you to find a better deal than this. 
This promo is to warn you that the best and worst of Red Faces Part 2 is coming your way. Because some people out there are addicted to watching others make absolute fools of themselves on national television. Like this. And this. And even this. So if you're looking for a cure, don't watch 7.30 Wednesday. It's an all-new collection of television like it was never meant to be. The best and worst of Red Faces 2. Long kick. Stewart takes it back in his goal line. Gives it into Hoppy. Hoppy's, uh, oh, well, he's made a, a great inroad through the Illawarra defence, which left three men on the ground behind him. And this is a non-committed defence here at the moment. And now they've conceded a penalty, so all the uh, the good work there by Hoppy has been rewarded. That's rather dumbo football. Now Big Mal comes over to take the kick. He'll get it up around halfway, one would think. He does a beautiful torpedo-type punt. Eight metres short of the halfway line. Now Walters. And the Stewart. The hoppy, hoppy dummies. Throws the defence off a little bit. Made an inroad. On the Walters. Stone picked that up beautifully. Fell as he did. With some skills, this lad. Bradley tried on the surge. Makes his accustomed ten yards. Now Stewart. Gale. Cut out pass out to Meninga. A bit of hard wrestling there by Rodwell manages to put uh, David Boyle down. Now Walters. Into Stewart. Dummies. Little grubber kick. Oh, he's got it on a string. <laughs> Absolutely delicious that one. He was not, had no angle at all. He was right on a metre from the sideline, and he's made about 23 metres with a kick. A, a delicious little kick. Canberra really on fire. They've come out with all guns blazing, and they have that eight-point lead. Many people may believe that they didn't have any inspiration or anything to play for going into this match, but let me tell you, during a, a, a long week of training, Tim Sheen's displayed the, uh, the points that were against when Canberra went away to the, uh, to the Wollongong showground, I should say, in round one returned uh, with 70 points, 79 points scored against them, so there is plenty of inspiration there, and uh, no doubt it's done the trick because they have come out really fired up. There's a vast difference in the point scoring potential of the respective sides. Illawarra have uh, only scored 282, but they've had only 196 scored against them, whereas Canberra have scored 349 points for that 353 against them, so they've had more points scored against than they've scored, Canberra indicating that they're an entertaining side but a bit soft in defence. The defence has been a bit of a problem this year, Canberra. They lost those players in, uh, in Todd and uh, the likes of Lazarus who, who did get through a lot of defensive work. I mean, Todd in particular, but uh, it has been a bit of a problem for them this season. Let's hope next season's a little bit better. Yes, I know it's uh, logic's there on the side of what you say, but uh, I still would enjoy to see a side win by scoring five tries to four rather than see a grinding battle when no ball movement takes place. Anyway, we're back to the action in this game, and there's plenty of it. Eight points to nil, Canberra lead. We've had about 20 minutes of play, and they've shown some uh, good authority. This fellow, Dale Fritz, who's carrying the ball at the moment, has shown uh, by his uh, demeanour that he's a very tough guy and not, not concerned with uh, taking on the opposition defence. He's a huge man, and uh, obviously Fulton will have his eye on him from the Australian point of view. The rubber kick by Gale takes play into the quarter line. Fielded by Wishart, he's tackled immediately. Good quick defence there as it came up. I think that was uh, David uh, Boyle. That's a good chasing uh, team. Another Simon. Simon gets it away to Rodwell. Rodwell trying to bust his way through, but he can't do it. There's a penalty to Illawarra, holding the leg in the tackle. One of those dumbo things that footballers do from time to time. I think uh, that particular Canberra player that did that must have had a brain explosion. The relief, the kick, and let me tell you that uh, Illawarra must be feeling like a little bit of relief. They've had a fairly torrid encounter in this match. They've been run around in, in the classic Canberra fashion. Illawarra, it's a good pass. The 
the Warriors still moving the ball. They're still yet to get to the halfway line. They've used up a few. McGregor slipped the pass neatly. Out of the way to support. Now, Waddell comes forward. They've not made a real impression in that last set of six. It was uh, fairly slackly taking, more or less a midfield bomb. Brett Mullins comes up for it. Boyle gets the bounce. Nobody was really committed to putting the uh, the man that was going to catch the ball under pressure. This is not the uh, Illawarra side that uh, I saw some weeks ago. Today they don't look quite as committed, and they should be today. This is an enormous opportunity for them if they can lift themselves. They can uh, they can slide into second spot in the competition. It's up for grabs. Long kick by Stewart, running them around once again. Once again, a great kick from Ricky Stewart. Uh, you can't beat his kicking game at times. If he's on target, uh, Ricky Stewart's one of the best in the game. Michael Bold, it's uh, one of the most uh, awful experiences on a football field to have a good kicking game against you and be constantly turned around and have to jog backwards, isn't it? It certainly is, Rex, and especially with those Canberra uh, forwards following you up as well. Big coming up and they're hitting the ball very well. They're getting up with quick play of the balls, and that's the reason Canberra keep rolling ahead. All right, well, let's see what they can do with this uh, set of six now. They've got about 11 or 12 metres out from their, uh, their goal line. Way to McGregor. And he's beautifully tackled right round the boots. Boyle's doing a good job on him. He's up very quick in defence. Young David Boyle is another one of those players Canberra has been without for the majority of the season. He's just returned from injury. And uh, he's, a, he's a welcome return for the club too. Dean Calloway, the dummy half. Back to Simmons. Oh, he's caught. Gets a pass away. Now to Riolo. Riolo again makes the break. It's a good performance by him. Gets it back on the inside to Rodwell. Rodwell strutting strongly. Throws the dummy on the outside. Tackled by one leg. By, by Mullins. Now they swing it out to the right. Simons away there to Fritz. Fritz gets it on to McGregor. McGregor going straight and hard. He's tackled only a few uh, metres out, about 15 metres out from the line. But uh, I believe he's lost the football. Or was it the handover there? That's the handover. Fritz playing the ball back to Croker. Well, that's the first good-looking attack that uh, right, the uh, Illawarra side have mounted in the first 23 or so minutes of this game. Let's hope there's more of it. Michael Bolt, uh, Paul McGregor running wide there with the ball. It's something he's got to do more of, I think. He has to be very involved with this game. We're giving Canberra a large weight advantage, and Paul McGregor is actually one of the largest players in, for the Steelers side. He needs to get involved and needs to put his authority on his game. He's you know, a representative centre, and he needs to be able to come to the fore and um, come up with the big plays in this uh, game today. Well, there again, we've got Stewart turning the uh, Illawarra side around. I, I think it's something psychological in the, in the context of when a good kicking game is against you, the team you're playing in, and you are turned around and constantly have to run, turn and run backwards towards your line. I think there's something psychological in it because it used to bug me, I can tell you. But uh, having a touch judge in it at the moment, I'm not sure what that's all about. I don't think it was anything very serious. I think on what you were saying there, even more so, Rex, the, the fact that the Steelers were up in Canberra's 22 and now they're all, all the way back in their own 22, uh, it certainly would be frustrating for those big forwards. Indeed. Now Simons goes to dummy half. Fritz was playing it now out to Rodwell. Rodwell tries to surge through the, the centre. He's a good player. He knows the way to run. He knows what to do with the ball in the uh, open too. Away there to number 11, Craig Izzard, one of the multi-talented Izzard family. Simons and the Fritz back on the inside there to Waddell. Waddell gets over the halfway line. They're showing a little bit more enterprise, looking on the inside and outside for support, Pincinelli back slammed hard last tackle Simmons kicks he's the counterpart of uh, Stewart not quite as effectively Mullins that's a good run, he made 8 metres there and uh, under a little bit of problem he had 2 defenders right on his hammer Boyle Steps and goes a couple of metres. Some of the Canberra players just a touch slow getting back on side. 
friendly Clyde. Stewart. Now Fritz. Uh, Darren Fritz. Let's, let's get it right. Darren Fritz. We've got two Fritzes playing. Dale in the, uh, the lower side. Darren in the uh, Canberra side. Stewart. The big dummy. The big sidestep. And the kick. It's a monumental kick. It's gone way downfield. The referee hasn't seen disposed to drop a penalty on anyone for it downtown. The reserve grade referee did. I think one, uh, one aspect about Ricky Stewart's kicking game too, when he does put a kick like that in, he, he gets a bit of air, he gives the ball a bit of air, and it gives those players time to come through when the ball is in the air too. Well, that's what they seek. I don't want to talk about uh, NFL football because I don't particularly like it, but uh, that's what one of the things that their kickers have to do when they use up the football and have to kick. Uh, they count the seconds that the ball hangs in the air, so they'll talk about a, a four-and-a-half-second kick or a five-second kick. Right to Simons, this looks a good kick down the sideline, breaking, no, it broken away again. Break back, that was uh, the leg break. Oh, has got a pass away there, that's nicely done too. Got it out to, uh, it looks like Boyle, Boyle gets it back on the inside, oh, there was knock on. A knock on there. Well, it was Jason Croker out there on the touchline, he threw a pass into Steve Stone. Stevie Stone did his best to try and pick up the ball, but unfortunately that small knock on, well, he has been handling well today, too. He's taken a couple of very bad passes, low passes, but he couldn't handle that one. And plenty of support out there, too. A little worried in possession from the scrum. Well, Fritz very nearly through, caught by one leg, hopping, hopping. Simmons. Matty Rodwell. Gets a pass back on the inside to Cross. Cross stands in the tackle, gets it away to Simons. He gets over the halfway line. They're starting to meld in a little better now. Starting to find each other with, with the ball. Oh, possession changing hands and those sort of situations Illawarra can ill afford. There's Mal Meninga. Puts the shoulder in. It's significant that three of them had to handle him to get him eventually onto the ground. He's an awesome sight, Mal Meninga. That game last Friday night against Brisbane where Meninga ran almost the length of the field to score a try. The, uh, the TV cameras there on that occasion showed a head-on shot of Meninga. I tell you what, I'm glad I wasn't in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> well, Osborne makes ground but lost the football. No sides guilty in this uh, last seven or eight minutes of, uh, of indiscretions with the football. Eight points to nil. Canberra lead Illawarra. We've had 30 minutes of play. Spooky, isn't it? Right now, never be blue. You're on the right side. How about that? Hey, babe, you and Mel, it's the same gift. Fair dinkum. I wish it was true. <laughs> Still Australia's number one lunchtime entertainment, the midday show. You're very popular with Ray Martin, weekdays. was meant to be ZZ. ZZ Top, that is. ZZ Top's greatest hits, plus the new single. ZZ Top, it doesn't stop. Southern Fright Boogie at its very best. ZZ Top's greatest hits, out now. Why suffer sinus pain and nasal oh. congestion a moment longer than you have to? Unlike some sinus preparations, new Panadol Sinus contains oh. proven paracetamol to quickly relieve sinus pain and headache, while a decongestant clears the sinuses, so you'll feel like your old self in next to no time. Panadol Sinus. Why suffer sinus pain and nasal congestion a moment longer? Your car's suspension has 28 different points where things can go wrong. Every day. Every kilometre. 28 different points where things can go wrong. 
Only Pedders expertly check all 28 suspension danger points for just $14. The Suspension Specialists. Pedders. Who do you reckon the smartest blokes in Canberra are? Ah, uh, the blokes in Parliament House. Get out. Well, who? Those smart blokes who sell Daihatsu. Yeah? Yeah. They've got the Mira with EFI engine from $9,990. Really? Plus great deals on Charade, yeah. Feroza and Applause. Wow. All with three-year warranty and fully imported from Japan. Listen, where do you find these smart blokes? Well, Gerald Slavens at Bell Conan and Scuderia Veloce's at Phillips. Smart car, Daihatsu. Yeah, I was going to say that. The demand for Omo Micro has been nothing less than phenomenal. And I can tell you why in just one word. Results. And it's not just me that thinks so. These old t-shirts have really come up just like new. And the results are wonderful. Just one scoop gives an outstanding clean. Just look. No more grimy marks. The collar and the cuffs are clean, they're white. It's a great result. New Omo Micro. Concentrated powder for a concentrated clean. It works for them. It'll work for you too. A brand new episode. Yes! Oh my God! I'm not her husband. About what to expect. Is the baby slippery when it comes out? Prenatal panic. You've got an awful lot to say for somebody without a uterus. For Murphy Brown right after Crime Pains Monday. The guys do some serious male bonding. We're going to go out and find our manhood on the open road. That's those chicks and Thelma and Louise. But while the cats are away... I'm getting kind of sweaty. Well, then take off your shirt, you goose. Cheers, Thursday night on Wind Television. Scrum one by Illawarra. Fritz trying to weave his way through the middle. Callaway. At the Pincinelli. Cross. Rodwell. Callaway getting to uh, every racket dummy half. Pincinelli took the uh, the ball, but really uh, wasn't ready for it and had to change direction. Simon, a little kick over the top. If the bounce is right, it was knocked on by an Illawarra player. Now, the referee, in my opinion, was wrong there. I think we'll see that in the replay, and I think we'll see that uh, the uh, Illawarra player knocked the ball forward. I think you'll see... Graham West has now called out his touch judge to try and get a second opinion on this, but it was uh, young Brendan Amira who picked up the ball and reached out over the line. That's the knock on. Yeah, it would have been a uh, bit of a travesty, that one, had it been allowed, as we see it again. And it was Amira who knocked the ball on originally, now he reaches out over the line there. Yeah, it's just the faintest of knock-ons, but the ball touched his hand and was propelled forward. So that's uh, well done by the referee there, and uh, well done by the touch judge. Michael Bolt, there's some uh, movement on the sideline down there. It looks like um, young Daryl McDonald in number 40. Well, Canberra just in possession about seven or eight metres outside their line. Osborne comes forward on the charge. Plays with that traditional headband. He must have uh, problems with his ears. We just saw the change there. It was Brett Mullins, the fullback, coming off. Brett uh, has been suffering from the bout of the flu this week. Whether or not that's been enough to pull him off. Darren McDonald is more than capable, slotting into that fullback position. He played there earlier this year. He's a big, strong fellow who last year, Tim Sheens did believe, was going to finish up the forward pack. Also down on the sideline, Gary Coyne looks to be warming up. Michael Bolt, another change there. Yes, uh, Fritz is off with Coin on. Uh, Coin's gone into the second row. Illawarra win the scrum. Brendan O'Meara came round from over to blind. McGregor goes sideways virtually, not much forward. He does in the last bit of the run and makes about a 10 metre gain. He's crossed the uh, block forward. Callaway, Simon, Fritz, Rodwell. Rodwell tries to get his body through. 
past the defence so that he can offload the football, but they're awake to that. The Canberra defenders, both of them, hang onto him and his arms. He's cried. <laughs> you can't walk without legs, you can't run certainly without them. Bradley knows all about that too. Simon, the kick downfield. Taken by Croker. This is McDonald, the uh, fullback. He's having to do a bit of bulking work while some of the Canberra players are a little bit tardy getting back on side there. They tend to walk back and uh, all bunch up at that particular moment. Ferner. Yeah, they definitely seem to take one or two one or two runs up the middle from the forwards before they do get organised. You'll see now they're starting to put some organisation in. Ricky Stewart getting involved once again. Something a pass back into Stephen Stone and then on to Gary Coyne. But uh, it certainly takes them that one or two balls to get rolling. Walters away to Stewart. Oh, beautifully taken. After Meninga, Meninga kicks on the last tackle. Osborne's on the chase. He might get there in first. Now he dived for it. The kicker's got there. Simon was able to get underneath him and kick the ball away. It'll be a line dropout to restart the play because the defending side kicked the ball dead. Uh, that was well worth the opportunity by Meninga. He had uh, Osborne close to it, as we can see. Paul Osborne putting on the pace there. For a front row, he was showing a bit of toe, but just not quick enough. Made the dive at the end, but failed to get to the ball. I think if he had gone over anyway, if we'd called it back a bit, uh, you would have seen that uh, Osborne was in front of the kicker at the time when uh, Meninga did put the chip over. So uh, whether or not the referee was onto that is another thing. Well, still time to go for more points to be scored before the half-time break. Simon. That's a good lengthy kick, well over 50 metres. On to Bradley Clyde. He's tackled midfield. They've got two sides of the ruck to work. Away to coin. Very experienced forward. Sort of a player that uh, you really would imagine he'd be in the first lineup, not coming on as a replacement, but uh, there's Stone. Got a pass away to Stewart. On to Gale. Gale driven backwards in the tackle. A very effective tackle. Stewart. Oh, dummy told them to, that he was going to come back on the inside. And there it is to Big Malmeninga, who was on the inside. Stewart really uh, set that up by magnificently suggesting to the opposition by moving his hand to the right that the winger was going to come inside him. He did that about two or three uh, times, and then he eventually found the gap and went through himself. We'll see that again, and you'll watch the skill of this man. He's a trick to watch. Well, how many times have we seen Ricky Stewart do that this year? He runs across the line there, shows the ball a couple of times, switches it back inside. There's no one better to be waiting for it than Mal Meninga. Going over for another Canberra try, taking the score now, along now to uh, 12 points to nil. Giving Ferner not a simple attempt at uh, goal. He's had uh, a couple of pretty tough uh, attempts. Once again, Ricky Stewart directing the traffic. He's a genius when he's playing like this and he gets the ball running wide with it. Across the line. I think the uh, beauty about Ricky Stewart is he's just so unpredictable. They just don't know what he's going to do with the ball next. There's an enormous amount of skill allied to his kicking game, which is so uh, dramatic and so important to his team. That alone would uh, get him into a lot of first grade sides. But uh, he's got the running game as well, so he's got the Quinoa. Well, Ferner would be wishing his uh, players and uh, teammates would be scoring a little closer to the goal because he's had a couple of uh, horrendous ones from out here. You can see just slightly to the uh, in the foreground there is the last place that he had a kick from. A little bit of sand there. About three metres in from the sideline. Oh, yes, this is a beautiful kick. He really is a good goal kicker. There's absolutely no vices in him at all. The ball travels straight through. A great goal. Magnificently uh, converted there. Canberra, 14. Illawarra, nil. Well, the Canberra side now setting up that 14 points to nil lead at half-time. Tim Sheens would have to be more than happy with it, as would the entire Canberra side. They've been playing the 
playing the right kind of football to defeat a team like Illawarra. Ricky Stewart there reaching for the ball, Sean Hoppy taking it. But uh, they certainly do look on top at this stage. Once again, Hoppy charging back upfield. Yeah, there seems to be a, a marked reluctance by the Illawarra side to commit themselves to defence. they allowing the opposition to run at them on frequent occasions and standing still to take the tackle. And that's no way to defend. Probably against the team that can move the ball as brilliantly as uh, the Canberra side can. That's good yardage being made by Osborne. They've cut away a little bit of a whack in the mouth there. And the coin, coin stands in the tackle. Last tackle coming up. Back it goes to Stewart. Stewart gives them hurry up again. Well, that's very close to going over the sideline. Now the touch judge has raced in. And we're going to see some players called up. What's this all about, Michael? It was uh, Dean Calloway trying to chase out from marker. And uh, the I can't actually see who was playing the ball, but uh, he stuck his right arm out and collared him on the way through. I think Dean Calloway just milked a fairly good penalty out of that one. A lot of changes down there too, Michael. Number 40 coming on for the Steelers' side. Looks like Bill Dunn. Bill Dunn's on and uh, David Walsh is off. It's a very critical time. The Steelers really have to do something out of the next eight minutes. This last three minutes of this first half and the first five of the next half to be a, a force in this game. Otherwise, it, uh, they've got a golden opportunity for the Winfield Cup this year and they're just seeing it slip through their fingers. Well, they do have a tough run in too, don't they? They've got those sides. Uh, Brisbane, I, I think they're playing Brisbane uh, at the showground, but... Uh, They've also got Penrith and Manly, which are two other sides, which are going to be difficult to toss as well. And certainly not a dream run in, that's for sure. But if you're going to uh, be playing these sides in the in the final five, you've got to be able to beat them prior to it. So you've got to toughen up, and that's what they're not doing at the moment. They're letting Canberra just dominate the, the forward play. Every time Canberra comes up, they're uh, getting out of that advantage line by four or five minutes. Rex had it in one before. They just weren't putting them down. They're just getting up too quickly for them. His wish hat from uh, 10 metres inside the halfway, almost midfield. Virtually no wind to speak of. Direction's the only thing required. And that's uh, not on for the uh, kick. So, we'll have failed to record any points at this stage, so it's still registering now at uh, 14 points to nil. I think Melbourne Inga's... Uh, fairly agreeable to, uh, would be fairly agreeable to come off at this stage and, and give his team a bit of a rest, but uh, certainly not in any hurry to get the action underway. Stewart with a monumental drop kick. It's about uh, well, 60 metres. Bouchard needs to get more involved than he has been. He's only touched the ball a couple of times in the uh, opening stanza. Craig Izzard to his feet slowly. Now out to Dunn, hits his first touch. He can be an exciting player. Simon. Out there to Rodwell. Rodwell nicely through, just stumbled that he got his body through the tackle. It was Bradley Clyde that came over and finally put him down. One of these days I'm going to put a myelometer on, uh, or an ergometer on, uh, Bradley Clyde and check out how far he runs in a match because it would uh, horrify most players. There wouldn't be too many forwards in the game who get through the work rate that Brad Clyde does works. No, unquestionably he's, he's a, a monumentally good player and uh, he's a, a great player for any young player to model himself on. Stewart. Osborne, Osborne puts it down, was looking what he was going to do with it before he took it. The ball being taken there cleanly by Dunn. Got away, away to Simon. Got a pass out there to uh, Craig Gizzard. Now Dunn. It's not sufficient that they just run for ground. They've got to run and observe the uh, the business of offloading the football from time to time. Wishart put in the clear by a lovely pass. He's got to go straight. He's got to go hard. He doesn't get the yes, he gets a pass away and it's taken by uh, Canberra. 
Well, they've an uh, offside uh, ruling there by the referee, which uh, will be disappointing for uh, the Canberra side because they covered fairly well. That's the half-time over in the background, or siren, is it? Well, they're going to take a kick, the Steelers, with the half-time siren going. But uh, on that occasion, it was a great covering tackle from the fullback, Darrell McDonald, who came in. You'll see here on the replay, McDonald coming across with Stewart. Wishart running for that corner. He comes back on the inside. McDonald took him head on and also assisted there by another Raiders 40. Had the ball jolted out of his arms. But uh, referee Graham West finding an indiscretion. I think it, uh, the ball actually was first touched by Scott Gale and then by Stewart, who was in front of him. I think that's the reason for the penalty. It's uh, not all that clear. There were a few players huddled around, but he did rule offside, and I think that's the reason for it. This gives uh, Illawarra a second attempt at goal from a metre out from the uh, quarter line and about nine metres in from the sideline. <laughs> Wish out the man. He tends to hook uh, the ball off the mound when he attempts to stretch for a distance. Now, the last kick he had from halfway. This one's not so, power's not so, uh, such a requirement. That's a good kick. So at the half time break, we've got Canberra 14, Illawarra 2. The try scorers for the uh, Canberra side have been Mullins and Meninga, and uh, Ferner has come up with a couple of goals. So that's the way it's been in this uh, quite exciting match here at Bruce Stadium. We'll be back shortly with more of the action. And a current affairs special report. This is the first time a television camera has entered their hostel. Mike Willisey inside South Africa. Mike! Banned for 20 years by the apartheid regime. What do you expect from us? Perhaps to face the truth. Also, Linda Kozlowski. I have a little bit of problems in Australia. An exclusive rare interview with Hope's leading lady. It takes two to make a marriage. And obviously that was one that wasn't working. Nolene divorced Paul first. And the cars best suited to Australian roads. This week on a current affair. Can you be sure your car is in safe hands? You can if you've been to Everlast. Where else could you find all these services in one place? Auto electrical and mechanical repairs, 24-hour towing, chrome and silver plating, panel beating and spray painting, and radiator and air conditioning service and repair by qualified specialists in each field. The result? Reliability, performance and immaculate presentation. To stay 30 years in this business, they must be good. Everlast Automotive, Kembla Street, Fishwick. Uh, did you know with your car insurance you have a no-claim bonus? Oh, sorry, I don't know. Yes. Yeah, and an excess? Yeah. Well, do you know what happens to them when you have an accident? We don't have a clue, mate. Just sign the papers. People hand over hundreds of dollars for car insurance without knowing all the benefits they can get for their money. Well, you know, if you're with AMI and you have an accident that's not your fault and you get the registration number of the other car, you don't lose any of your no-claim bonus and you don't have to pay any excess. Oh, that's good. That's terrific. Because when you stop and think about car insurance, you'll know you're lucky to be with Amy. So you thought you couldn't afford a new car and a car phone. Think again. For a limited time only, Tara Ford is offering an Australian-made Motorola car phone, usually around $1,000 for just $99 with any purchase of any new or used vehicle. Everyone benefits with Tara Ford's quality cars, good deals and after-sale service. And now, with these bonus Motorola car phones at just $99, the choice couldn't be clearer. Test drive today. Tara Ford challenge you to find a better deal than this. Shop and save at Copper Art. These magnificent Camperwood cabinets are only $395. Or Queen Anne style TV stands reduced to $159. Where? Only at Copper Art, where your dollar always buys more. The child flight helicopter service has saved the lives of hundreds of babies. Now, due to lack of funding, the service is struggling to keep flying. A $20 donation will help keep it aloft and prevent countless babies from being grounded. One day may be yours. Please ring 02-692-6895 now with your donation. Please. Thursday, 7.30. <laughs>
Whatever your budget. Fresh air, fresh water, oh, sunshine, it was perfect. Get away to some of life's great pleasures. Wanda National Park has something for your every mood. Cast off on a houseboat discovery and learn where you stand with travel agents. Who, for example, is responsible if there are any price increases after you've made your booking? Travel to the home of the hippie for a comic treat. We're about to have a rather yes. mystical experience. Get away Thursday, 7.30 on Win. Well, Illawarra coming back on the field now. Now we'll have a bit of a look through the sides and uh, see whether there's any changes. You know, Pincinelli's there in 41 and uh, the other player, number 40, Bill Dunn. One to change before the game and one to change during the game. Canberra come back onto the field. We see right there too, Rex. Bradley Clyde coming back out for the second half, so uh, a tendonitis. Couldn't be too bad for him. Yes, he's uh, he would have uh, every reason to have tendonitis. He does more running than most, but <laughs> he's obviously a very fit man. Well, can this Illawarra side get the uh, the winning of the game that's uh, almost away from them? At half time, they trail by 14 points to nil. It's uh, a big ask. Referee shading his eyes from the sun, which is uh, about to disappear sometime in the next 10 to 15 minutes down behind the, uh, the grandstand. Well, they're asked, are they ready, the Illawarra side? They signify they are, and Ferner will kick off from the halfway. Simon takes the ball on the full. The Rodwell bust the defence, they took it a little bit casually the tackling, but he made 25 metres he got out to the uh, to the 20, 22 mark now they've got a lot to do, Illawarra let's see how they go about it, they're not uh, fired up at the moment need somebody to make a, uh, a dramatic run, something dramatic to happen usually fires everybody up to go on with it Illawarra are really going to have to come to life in the early stages of this first half. They have to be the next scorers. They have to get points on the board next. Otherwise, I think as far as this match is concerned, they can kiss a goodbye and a penalty going there to the Illawarra side. It's offside. Good towering kick there. Callaway gets up there quickly to get the ball started. He does that now. And a Simon. Riddell comes ahead. Front row forward, he's not played as well as he can play. Simon, way to Izzard. Tackled about three metres short of the quarter line. Well, Fritz running. They sent a decoy through in front of him. Callaway, Izzard, Pincinelli switches the play back to Simon. Simon along to the fullback, oh, and he's well met. By a strong tackle there from uh, David Boyle, who's been one of the better defenders in this side. Well, that was better looking stuff from the Illawarra Steelers. They tried to do something with the ball then. They switched it back inside, and even though Canberra read it very well, at least they were trying. Well, the kick's probably going to go a bit too far to be difficult. It is. Darrell McDonald standing underneath that was under no pressure at all. Had, uh, well, about five, five yards before the first defender could get to first attacker could get to him and uh, really was not under any great pressure so that's uh, a kick that really wasn't a great one and Canberra got two trainers on the field at the moment giving drinks of water to their respective players one would have thought they could have done that I did actually notice that was Scott Gale that just took a drink then he came out of the field uh, after half time and was, uh, was physically sick um, and, he, and he did take a drink at that stage and, and just had another drink then, so I don't think Scotty Gale's too well at the present time. Now Meninga. Put down by McGregor. Stone makes a half break. He's a, a willing little horse, this fellow. He's not the biggest forward I've ever seen, but he's certainly very good. Wallace loses the ball after running forward. Yeah, Steve Stone, he's been another fine for the Canberra side. Of course, uh, Stone, he was the uh, captain of the South Sydney's under-21 side back in 1989, I think. He took that side to the grand final. 
and uh, on that occasion they defeated Canberra. Uh, Stoney then switched and uh, put on the green and uh, hasn't really looked back since. He's been a, a vital part of the Canberra team this year with so many players missing through the test duties, etc. Steve Stone's been on call most of the time and uh, certainly hasn't let his side down. Illawarra in possession. Dale Fritz getting up to play it. Galloway does a full pivot before he passed it. That was uh, only time missing. Cross trying to get those arms free to get a pass away to Rodwell, who came on the outside of him, but uh, he wasn't able to do it. Liddell going forward. Galloway again. Simon's so little grubber kick through too far. No, not that uh, far. It's regathered. It came off uh, a, a, a Canberra Raiders player. Well, probably should have, uh, the other option he had there was to offload the football straight away. That shot probably should have happened. Little Waddell, cut away at dummy half. The two sides of the ruck to work. Craig Izzard goes straight and hard, but tackled. They're only running one out. They're not linking with each other. Simons, Punchinelli. McGregor steps back off the right foot, goes back into the defence. Wrapped up firmly. Nice to grab a kick through. Croker goes down on it. Pinchinelli is there to tackle him. Now Randall McDonald or Daryl McDonald. Good, some uh, what uh, tough running full, uh, fullback he is. He's a very interesting player when he gets the ball on the over. Very strong, good runner. As much as Darren McDonald does carry a bit of size with him, he, he certainly puts on the pace when he uh, when he gets in a break. He has got a little bit of speed about him. As I did mention earlier, uh, of course, Darren McDonald was being touted as a forward for this year, but uh, he has stayed in the backs and uh, has played extremely well too. Ricky Stewart once again getting that kicking game going, and he puts a kick now deep into the uh, Illawarra Steelers half, bouncing around. Rod Wishart picks it up, evades one, evades two. Runs around three, looks back inside. Well, that's a good run by Wishart. He's uh, showed a little bit of class on that occasion. Didn't die with the football. Kept it alive, and that was good. Now McGregor comes away with a ball. Gets a, a one-handed pass away to Simmons. Flicked out the back door. Simmons tackled. Callow. He's hard on uh, getting to the stage of wondering whether he can pass the football. He's died on pretty near every occasion uh, that he's run with it. Unless they're under instructions, certain players not to pass the football. Well, that's a good tackle. Very good tackle. God, Wish uh, Wishart was absolutely knocked over straight away there by Croker. He didn't have a room to move. McDonald didn't get anywhere near that. It's a handover. Even though Pinchinelli came down with the with possession from the bomb. So a hobby making half a break there. Steve Walters into the dummy half position and uh, running from dummy half as we often see. Actually it was David Boyle there. Steve Walters now gets the ball back from pass from Gary Coyne there. He's had for him today a quiet game, I thought. He's not been uh, anywhere near as brilliant uh, as many of the occasions I've seen him. Walt was on the there. Graham West there pinning one of the Illawarra forwards for uh, being in, in the way of the play, the ball. Well, actually... he was standing off to the side and then he still tackled the player that ran, so he can't be construed as a marker if he's standing at the side. Steve Waddell having a few words to say there. The penalty's now 4-3 in favour of the Steelers. Norman Inger will take this kick and no doubt put Canberra straight back into an attacking position. This is just really what Taylor Warra didn't want to see in this second half. Michael Bolt. Uh, Graham Murray said at half time what he wants to do is to quicken up our play the balls and uh, slow the Canberra down. Canberra and getting the roll on from the play the ball, allowing Ricky Stewart to get his kicking game together. And he certainly wouldn't be wanting penalties like that this early in the second half, that's for sure. Meninga coming on the burst. McDonald takes over for him. Ball is a dummy half. Osborne. And the Ferner. Ferner standing wide. Trying to use his pace. 
14 points to two. Canberra at ricocheted. Oh dear, oh dear. We've done and taken that. It was a, an odds on chance he might have been able to sprint uh, the required distance to score a try, but he couldn't do it. Well, that was unlucky for the Illawarra side there. Dunn uh, reaching for that ball. Just failing to gather it in and knocking it on, knocking it in front of him. And uh, as you mentioned there, Rex, I suppose if he had got the ball, he did have support outside too, and he, and he could have easily got away with uh, a bit of a break. Meninga in behind him. We'll see Dunn here reaches for the ball, spills it forward. Clyde also chasing him from behind. Had a speedy one in Brendan O'Meara outside him, so there was a, a possible chance gone begging for the Steelers. Yeah, I doubt, doubt that he could have sprinted the distance before he was caught, but he had support, so there was a possibility of a try coming from that uh, sequence there if he'd not uh, mishandled. Stewart likes to go to the blind side. He's done very well. He's uh, thrown that dummy again. That's the dummy with the, <laughs> the right hand suggesting to the opposition that somebody should come inside him. Bradley Clyde, beautiful pass out to Mal Meninga. Meninga flops the pass out there nicely out to uh, Jason Croker. Croker goes strong and hard, and he scored a very good try. He's pushed uh, David Riolo out of the way and uh, gone in for a very, very good Canberra try. So the score's starting to look a little bit difficult for the, uh, for the Illawarra Steelers now, the Illawarra Raiders now, because uh, at 18 points to two, well, what do you think? Jason Croker, two big fins there. It was a fantastic individual effort from Croker. You'll see the ball swung wide. The Raiders throwing the ball. Clyde Meninga into a big hole. Throws the ball out to Croker. Comes, goes to go back inside. One, two. Barges over for a, a classic winger's try. And as you mentioned, that scoreline now is starting to get away from the Illawarra side. 18 points to two. We've got about 29 minutes to go on this match and uh, Canberra looking ominous. It, it's worth repeating that Bradley Clyde was involved at the start of that uh, try too. He gave the pass to Meninga. Meninga threw the lob pass out to Croker, the wing three-quarter, who scored. But it took the expertise of two players to put Croker into the position to score. But let's not take anything away from him because he had that great uh, ability to belt a fin into the face of the... Uh, pretenders the tacklers and on two occasions he was able to push them off with that fence so a very good try what about this fella david ferner he's uh, he's kicked three from three this afternoon lining up for another shot as we said earlier david ferner yet to sign with the club hopefully that will come during this week at some stage Ferner is being uh, looked at by many sydney clubs at the present time he's one of those players who who can do almost anything on a football field He's really come on in 1992 as he lines this one up. Yes, he'll be getting sick of kicking from the sideline, but it hasn't made any difference at all because that one hits the right hand upright and goes to the left of the ricochet, so he's done it both ways. He's hit the left hand upright and the ball has gone to the right, and now he's hit the right hand upright and the ball has gone to the left. On both occasions, the ball went over the go for a goal, so he's really got that uh, worked out to a fine art. So that now takes the score on to Canberra 20, Illawarra 2. L. Her name evokes images of perfection. She's got an incredible body. 8.30 Thursday on Wind Television, Journey into Paradise. It's kind of magical. For an exclusive television special that's not to be missed. There's nothing wrong with your body. There's nothing wrong with being naked. Discover the woman they call the body. L. McPherson. When Garuda Indonesia presents the world premiere of L. Hi Australia, join me for the special presentation of my 1993 calendar. Thursday night on Wind Television. Got a little problem hanging around that seems to have gotten out of hand? Everlast Automotive turns these problems into solutions. With their team of automotive specialists, they'll have your problem banged into shape, wired for action, powered for performance, protected from the elements, and given a brand new brilliance, all under the one roof. Everlast Automotive turns problems back into cars. See them for every last thing. Oh, almost. What would you say to dinner tonight? Just the two of us. It depends. <laughs> Is your mum cooking a roast or something? No, I'm off to McDonald's for a McRib. It's my time now for McRib. McRib is all tender pork that's grilled and dipped in a special barbecue sauce, topped with onions and pickles and served on a long toasted bun. It's my time now. Mmm. Reckon that beats your mum's roast. Tasty, huh? 
Who do you reckon the smartest blokes in Canberra are? Ah, uh, the blokes in Parliament House. Get out. Well, who? Those smart blokes who sell Daihatsu. Yeah? Yeah. They've got the Mira with EFI engine from $9,990. Really? Plus great deals on Charade, yeah. Feroza and Applause. Wow. All with three-year warranty and fully imported from Japan. Listen, where do you find these smart blokes? Well, Gerald Slavens at Belconnen and Scuderia Veloce's at Phillips. Smart car, Daihatsu. Yeah, I was going to say that. Cleaning toilets is a lousy job. Nobody likes it. But now there's new Maxi Flush, so you'll never have to do it again. Just drop it in your cistern. It cleans and deodorizes automatically with every flush for up to four months. Because new Maxi Flush gives you around 2,000 flushes. Helps keep your toilet bowl clean and fresh for up to four months. Yes, four months. Try new Maxi Flush. It cleans your toilet with every flush. You won't find fitter, happier, healthier dogs than these. And a lot of it comes down to their food. Paul Robinson, breeder of champion pointers, talks about Pal Casserole. When you open the can and pour it out, it looks just like a casserole you'd make for yourself. There's lots and lots of meaty chunks in it, lots of lovely thick gravy. It's vitamin enriched and there's no preservatives. If they get the right foods, then they are fit and happy. Pal Casserole is a healthy and hearty dog food that I can totally recommend. Top breeders recommend Pal. 8.30 Tuesday. Come on, Kel. There's got to be plenty of videotapes of you lying around. Kelly does Hollywood. Is that me? It's a cartoon, honey. In a special one-hour episode. We're irresistible. Married with children. 8.30 Tuesday on Win Television. Weeknights at 5 o'clock, the enthralling True Life series that captivated Australia. Rescue 911, back in a brand new series. Hundreds of lives saved. Real people facing real drama. Rescue 911, weeknights on Win. Walter down on the sideline, if you're still there, you, you've probably put the boots on by now. Uh, at this stage, I tell you what, it might be a chance. It's so cold down here, it might, might be one way to warm up, but uh, we've got a change at the moment uh, with the Illawarra side. David Walsh has gone on, and Dean Calloway has come off, and it doesn't look like Dean's been injured. Uh, Dean Schipoletti uh, is not on the bench, so it, uh, we're going to have a very interesting situation with the hookers with the Steelers, and maybe in this uh, next 10, 15 minutes, there could be one or two against the head to Canberra. Sounds like you have a lot of faith in those two guys. <laughs> yes, it's, uh, I'm, I'm from the old style. I still think there is some skill left in hooking. Not much, though. Now back to the action here and play midway between the quarter and halfway. Ball's given back to Stewart, and he does one of his monumentally long kicks, which takes play into the opposition quarter, taken by Rioli, and uh, he tries to run the ball out. He gets about eight metres beyond the quarter line. Wish out the dummy half away to McGregor. McGregor then on to Rodwell. Rodwell surges forward. He's belted over the top and a good defensive uh, tackle by uh, Don Ferner. Billy Dunn came up the blind side of the ruck there with a very strong run. Now Illawarra got a deep set back line. What are they going to do with it? McGregor has pushed uh, Brett, uh, Scott Gale out of the way. Rex, uh, Paul McGregor, we just haven't seen enough of him in this match. No, I subscribe to the view that the exceptional players have to play exceptionally. <laughs> They've got to have a, a, an inbuilt urge to do more. And unfortunately, McGregor doesn't seem to be that sort of a player. Coin. Stands. Gives the ball to Gale. They're into there into their ball distribution mode at the moment. Away there nicely to Walters. Walters has gone up to the right. He's uh, run out of support. I think he's going to be tackled short of the line. They should score if they just move the ball nicely along their line now. They've got a, a long... This a long pass comes out from, uh, from Stewart. Stewart gets it a pass away. Out it goes to Meninga. To uh, Meninga. <laughs> and then back on the inside to number five, Jason Croker. And he's tackled... And 10 minutes in the sin bin, as if Illawarra don't have enough troubles at the moment. There's uh, it's their half John Simon, John coming, Simon off. coming off. Yes, I didn't, uh, wasn't able to recognise him. He looks just a little bit disreputable with that black uh, gear hanging out from underneath his shorts. But uh, and his socks down around his boots. Well, there's uh, an opportunity missed by Canberra. They had the 
the opportunity for six there but uh, ball's been knocked on and now the Illawarra side will be able to get the uh, scrum feed and get possession again well that's probably the worst thing Ricky Stewart's done all game taking the tap there and, uh, and knocking the ball on just over the line they had six tackles they had Illawarra on the rack a scoreline of 20 points to two and one player down and a player off Yes, I'm, I still don't know how they failed to score on that occasion, but here's Stewart now, he's whipped it away. Out to Gale, Gale has the pass knocked down here, the referee has been picked up there, but let's see who's going to get to the defence here, which one of the defenders. Kroger came in from the right, from the left wing with a magnificent tackle and took out uh, Brendan O'Mara. Now Rodwell running nicely from uh, that uh, position, he's tackled directly on the quarter line. Now they've got a back line in position. Can they move the ball? Done. Away to Fritz. Fritz gets a pass on to McGregor. I think he was tackled before he got the ball there. The referee didn't think so. Waddle, Waddell goes through, gets a pass away there to Cross. Cross stands in the tackle, can't get the pass away. Fritz. Pincinelli, oh, much too hard. The ball went to ground. And Canberra have fallen on it. That pass came to Piccinelli like a rocket. He was not in a position to handle that one. That's ridiculous, passing a football that hard at a man that's only two metres from him. Daryl McDonald. Exciting runner. Stands in the tackle. Can't get the ball away. Just outside the quarter. Bradley Clyde. On the surge, running very strongly. Coin. Stewart. Back on the inside to Ferner. Ferner will come on a pace playing in uh, good quality teams like uh, Canberra. He's got all the skills. Oh, this is beautiful stuff. Canberra get the pass back on the inside. It's Gary Coin. Coin. Uh, yeah, Gary Coin will score. I thought there might have been a good chance of defence pulling him back there, but uh, it wasn't to be. I think Sean Hoppy takes some credit for that try too. There was uh, good interpassing down the sideline, but uh, no uh, credit taken away from Coyne there. He was able to go the last 20 metres and score the try. Well, you mentioned Sean Hoppy. Sean Hoppy down that flank there with the ball, getting right away from the defence, fended off one, saw the corner, threw the ball back inside, Coyne in support. Coyne looked like he was going to run out of legs, but uh, managed to step out of the tackle and places the ball down in nice position for David Ferner to put over the kick which should take it to 26 points to two Paul Osborne throwing the ball away Meninga quick hands getting the ball out wide Hoppy on that run down the touch inside Gary Coyne another man who's yet to sign for next season Coyne in under the post the Raiders now running right away with this match Darren Fritz is back on a little bit of movement on the Raiders bench and now, once again, David Ferner with a shot from directly in front. He should put this one over. Well, he's kicked all the goals from the sideline, or three of his goals have been from the sideline. I don't know that he's feel comfortable with this one directly in front. It's only about uh, 12 metres out, and it's right in front of the black dot. Michael O'Neill coming on as a replacement. And Ferner gets the goal. So the score hastens on, Canberra 26, Illawarra 2. Still got about uh, 20 minutes or so of this game to play and uh, one suspects there's a lot more tries yet to be scored. Monday night at the movies, all the action you can handle. Boards, don't hit that. Starting off at 8.30. Bruce Lee. In the original number one action blockbuster. Don't think. Feel. Enter the dragon. Then double the excitement. Jean-Claude Van Damme. In the television premiere. Black Eagle. The big ones coming your way. Enter the dragon and Black Eagle. Monday from 8.30 on Wind Television. It's bad enough when you leave your rego to the last minute. Now you need a green slip too. You can get MMI's amazingly simple green slip from an insurance broker. Almost any Caltech service station. Or of course any MMI office. Amazing. You can even get one over the phone. Even more amazing. 
Call 008 027268 for the amazingly simple green slip from MMI, the quality standard in insurance. Your car's suspension has 28 different points where things can go wrong. Every day. Every kilometre. 28 different points where things can go wrong. Only Pedders expertly check all 28 suspension danger points for just $14. The Suspension Specialists. Pedders. So you thought you couldn't afford a new car and a car phone? Think again. For a limited time only, Tara Ford is offering an Australian-made Motorola car phone, usually around $1,000 for just $99 with any purchase of any new or used vehicle. Everyone benefits with Tara Ford's quality cars, good deals and after-sale service. And now, with these bonus Motorola car phones at just $99, the choice couldn't be clearer. Test drive today. Tara Ford challenged you to find a better deal than this. It's happening. It's happening. Happening now. They're big, they're noisy, they're dinosaurs. These spectacular life-size replicas of the real thing have amazed children and adults alike around the world. And they're on center stage at the Hyperdome till the 29th. Something's happening. Something big's happening. Dinosaurs, don't miss it. It's happening. Philips' new range of natural color, large screen televisions, bring pictures to life. The same technology has also been applied to the sound quality. Philips' Symphobass Hi-Fi system brings you another step closer to the ultimate home cinema sound experience. Philips, take a closer look. Clint Eastwood is Dirty Harry. For the first time ever, four big movies in one action-shattering week. Wednesday night, Dirty Harry the movie. Do I feel lucky? Once you've met him... Well, do you? Punk. You'll never forget. Callahan. And then, the action classic Magnum Force. Saturday night, the legend lives on in The Enforcer. Remember me? Followed by a special adult extended version... Go ahead. ...of sudden impact. Make my day. Dirty Harry's best begin Wednesday on Win Television. Walter, we said at the start of the match that uh, we, the three of us felt actually that uh, Canberra were going to get away with the game, but uh, certainly I don't think we could imagine it was going to be by this much. We certainly didn't, or I certainly didn't. It, uh, I knew they were in for a tough game today, the Steelers. They had to be right on the ball. Canberra got away to a magnificent start. Ricky Stewart has turned Illawarra back um, in every set of six. They just haven't got off word go, and they've just been piling it on ever since. And the, it's not over yet. There's another 20 minutes to go. I've got to say, it's a, it's a shame when you think that uh, a side like Canberra that plays the entertaining football, that throws the ball around, and they aren't going to be there this season. They're, they're not going to be there when, when it's finals time. It's a very frustrating part. It, uh, the Steelers have been banking on a magnificent kicking game and a great defensive uh, record as well. Unfortunately, it, uh, it may well come uh, against them in this latter part of the season. You know, you've got to get some, uh, some good ball movement to, uh, to get into this final five. Well, Canberra have been uh, penalised on that occasion. Yes, I agree with both of you that it'll be a tragedy of the first water that uh, Canberra aren't in the final five contention because they are a brilliant side and potentially uh, as good as Brisbane or any other side that you can mention. And there's that pass look forward to. The referee stood right in front of it and uh, appeared to let it go. Uh, Illawarra starting to put on some uh, attack up here. They're only 10 metres out from the line. Neil has come on as a replacement. Michael Neal, formerly with the Western Suburbs and Balmain Clubs. Redhead and uh, a very exciting, committed player. Well, Ginger Meigs. Ginger Meigs is right. He's uh, worth his weight in gold to a lot of teams. Still hammering away now. Neal's got the ball, got a bad pass away, but it bounces up nicely for uh, Fritz. Fritz has uh, tried his uh, little size that he runs today. They haven't come off. Rodwell. That hasn't gone very far forward. Rodwell, the ball was picked up, thrown backwards. He had to come around and try the defence, and that's a handover, so that's good work by uh, the uh, Canberra players involved. Ferner, 
away on the charge. Gets a nice pass away to McDonald. McDonald, the fullback, standing there. Tackle on the uh, borderline. Now Osborne. Coin. Stone again. Vol. Stone again. He's uh, frequently pops up in two, counting the ball in two of a set of six. So he's uh, got a very good work rate and very committed, very enthusiastic about his football. That's a great kick. And then they've been great all afternoon. Just turned the Illawarra side around completely. There another classic kick there from Stewart. Once again, getting the Steelers on the back pedal. We've got a change for the Canberra side on the sideline. Looks like uh, David Woods coming on in number 23, Michael Bolt. It's uh, David Woods coming on. There hasn't been any movement from the Canberra side as yet, so I can't actually tell you who's coming off. Well, 7,984 people have been in to watch today. This particular match, not a great crowd, but uh, they've seen enough to know that uh, if... Uh, Canberra were going to be contenders in this uh, premiership in 92 no, uh, people wouldn't be seeing so much about Brisbane being way down the stairs to win it. The Lawarra have been a particularly well performed team all the year, they've beaten some good sides they don't play that well away from home but they've got a marvellous record at home and uh, they have been done like a dog's dinner today, let me tell you at 26 points to 2, they're lucky to have the 2 Stewart trying his little dummy trick on that occasion. They've finally woken to the fact that he doesn't mean that he's going to uh, pass the ball, flick the ball back inside when he waves his hand there. Walter, it looks like that change might be for uh, Bradley Clyde. Yes, Bradley Clyde's been summoned to the sideline. As soon as uh, Canberra get the ball, I'd say the change will be on. I think they probably think they're far enough ahead. <laughs> Neil. He gets up and plays the ball forward, which he's entitled to do. Gets a long pass away. He got a kick and put down there. It's a nice bit of shepherding there by uh, Darren Fritz, who was able to shepherd McDonald by just running towards the ball and not getting out of the way of a player who was uh, an Illawarra player that wanted to get to it. He worked on the premise correctly according to the rules, but he doesn't have to get out of the way of anyone when he's running for the football. Coin, nice pass, out to Stone, Stone gets it away there, nicely out to Croker, Croker's up the sideline, looks back on the inside, he's slipped away now, he's going to score on his own, is he? Well, <laughs> he can't keep going to the right, <laughs> he gives it away to number 23, and number 23 is the player, and that's Dave Woods going Dave in Wood, next to the sticks, just came on. He's been on the field for about three seconds, Woodsy, and he's, he's got that ball from, uh, from Croker, who looked like he was going to score the try himself. And uh, Woods goes in next to the post to take the scoreline to a blowout, basically. Some great running and great passing of the ball. Once again on the replay, we see Coyne getting it away through those backs. This is Croker running with the ball. Looking back on the inside, he decides to start off on the inside. He said, I'll keep going here. <laughs> and he goes again, stumbles, flicks the ball up for Woodsy. And big David Woods over next to the post. I'm not quite sure, but it may be his first try of the season. May well be, but he certainly won't be his uh, first try that he scored inside the opening few seconds that he got on the field. I think he only had time just to say hello to the touch judge and be given the authority to go on, and the next thing he was involved in the movement. Anyway, that's a, a nice uh, plus for him. 30 points to two. Canberra lead. One suggests after this, it'll be 32 points to two. I think they'll be talking about that try for a while to come. As David Ferner adds the two extras to push the scoreline out to 32 points to two in favour of the Canberra Raiders. Pleasing the fans that have turned up this afternoon on what's been a uh, fairly nice afternoon weather-wise. Yes, yeah, just a very light zephyr of a breeze blowing across the ground now. It's only light. 
the temperature out there is uh, not as cold as it can be in Canberra. And uh, obviously the Canberra boys are appreciating the cold because they're uh, scoring tries at a great rate of knots. This is a most comprehensive win. This is a, a very, very good and comprehensive uh, performance by Canberra today. Little doubt about it. Well, they've kept Illawarra scoreless, and I, I mean, as far as tries are concerned, and, and uh, that's probably the most important part. Ferner plays it back to Walters, back to Stewart. The tried and true pattern, the formula. Downfield it goes, back to the quarter. Rialo tries to run it out. Tackled by Stone, who's had a mighty game today for uh, the Canberra team. Make no bones about it. Stone, one of the better performed players, and certainly not one of the, the big names. He's been everywhere. Just out running crossfield and being an easy mark for the tackle of Coyne. Done. Coyne again. Swings him down. They're still eight metres short of the halfway line. That pass looked marginally forward. The referee standing 15 metres from it. Didn't rule on it. Neil, back in. Intercepted by Walters. Walters gets it into Hoppy. Hoppy surges away. He'll score on his own. Oh, no, he won't. Well, the referee is going to rule a double movement. Well, we can't tell you from here that that was the case, but we'll watch it from head on. The crowd don't like it, but I suspect that's only because it's a, a try that's been scored uh, and the uh, local crowd don't like the tries being disallowed. Now, if he advances his arms, once he leaves, uh, hits the ground, certainly it was a double movement, no, no doubt about it. His arms advance the ball, so if they ricochet, if he ricochets over, bounces over, that's a different matter. The referee was quite right on that connection. A brand new episode. Yes. Oh, my God. I'm not her husband. About what to expect. Is the baby slippery when it comes out? Prenatal panic. You've got an awful lot to say for somebody without a uterus. For Murphy Brown, right after Grind Pains Monday. Got a little problem hanging around that seems to have gotten out of hand? Everlast Automotive turns these problems into solutions. With their team of automotive specialists, they'll have your problem banged into shape, wired for action, powered for performance, protected from the elements, and given a brand new brilliance, all under the one roof. Everlast Automotive turns problems back into cars. See them for every last thing. Oh, almost. Nobody is more behind Mitsubishi's sponsorship of the National Basketball League than our dealers. And right now, they're getting into the spirit of things. Offering unbeatable all-star deals on the entire Mitsubishi range of cars and light commercials. They're lean, they're mean, and right now, they're keen. So see your participating Mitsubishi dealer now. He's waiting to play ball. Many manufacturers make claims about the superiority of their running shoes. But the combination of foot stability, medial lateral control, and greater cushioning at the point of impact has so far eluded them. Only Saucony Grid delivers superior stability, support, and control. If you're serious about your sport, Saucony is serious about your shoes. Saucony, we're in the shoe business, not show business. Attention adults who appreciate adult products. Canberra's Venus, established for eight years. Venus is at your service. Centrally located in Fishwick, Venus. Open until late, Canberra's Venus is open from 10 a.m. daily, but only for adults. Canberra's Venus Adult Shop, 108 Gladstone Street, Fishwick. Don't have time. I oh, know what to do. So it's already done for you. We'll woo with your fresh food people with fresh ideas. I won't be home to cook you now. Thank you. <sighs> we forgot the milk. Oh. Easy meals made the fresh food way. With a woo with fresh food people for the way you live today. 
the guys do some serious mile bonding. So we're going to go out and find our manhood on the open road. That's those chicks in Thelma and Louise. But while the cats are away... I'm getting kind of sweaty. Well, then take off your shirt, you goose. Cheers, Thursday night on Wind Television. Michael, one really worrying aspect to come out of this game for Illawarra has been the mistake rate. It's certainly been huge for the Illawarra. They normally come into a game and probably do around the 14 mistakes for the whole game. I reckon they did that in the first 20 minutes of this game. But uh, Graham Murray certainly going to be a very worried man after this performance. Three games to go, very tough games. It's, uh, it's certainly a hard road to hoe. They've made every mistake possible today. and uh, the, They've invented a few new ones. They too. certainly have, but take nothing away from Canberra. They've been totally awesome out here today. Well, I noticed that they play uh, Manly, play Brisbane away, and then Illawarra at home. Yes, that will so certainly that be... might be a, a good day for, uh, for uh, Illawarra to play better than they've played today. No doubt you'll be at uh, Brookvale with the blanket wrecks. I'll be there with knobs on. That pass is forward. Clearly forward. So there you are. There's a mistake that they hadn't made before that had been penalised, uh, Michael Bolt. Uh, the pass from dummy half to the first receiver goes forward. It takes a particularly Dumbo sort of operation to do that one. Yeah, they're showing a lot of initiative here at the moment to come up with the new ones. <laughs> Let's see what Canberra can do with this move. Lobby pass out to McDonald. McDonald slips and falls. And the players running everywhere there. Oh, what a good strong surge that was from Fritz. Absolutely uh, magnificent way to run. Walter slips into dummy half. Coin. Meninga, one-handed pass on the hoppy. Oh, he's made a meal of it again. That's Stone, backed up beautifully. Robs the pass over the top, intercepted by Rod Rod uh, Rodwell. So Canberra making some mistakes at the moment, but uh, it's a different type of mistake. They're not getting themselves into trouble. They're just relieving the opposition. Paul Osborne running back there, shaking his head. I thought he, he probably thought to himself he was in for one then. Great tackle by Mal Meninga. Play stopped. Venom O'Meara has got into a stage uh, at the moment of uh, being beaten by Hoppy and uh, shaking his head as Hoppy runs past him. I suggest that's not the right attitude. He's got to do more than uh, shake his head about the fact that the guy's beaten him about four times today. A kick. Goes into the end goal area. McDonald picks it up. There's a line of Illawarra players there, not to be busted. They tackle him about three metres out. Now, Canberra, this is the only part of the play today that's worried me. They've taken a long time to get all their players back on side. This is the second play of the ball, and they're only just back. Walters ploughing his way forward to the quarter line. David Boyle, a good, honest performance today, has tackled particularly well. Fritz Meninga. Well, put a mark on the wall. O'Meara has tackled Hoppy. Stewart kicks right down uh, Riallo's throat. Got a bit of pace, this lad, too. They all let him run. Over the top came Osborne. Just inside the uh, Canberra halfway line. Done. He comes to a shuddering halt. He's got a bit of pace, this fella, too. I'd like to see him standing wider and deeper. He's too flat all the time, too flat. Ten metres into the uh, quarter line, into the uh, half. Simon. McGregor trying desperately hard, but there were two men marking him on that occasion. Up she goes. McDonald. Oh, he, yes, he has. He's taken that very well, but he didn't take it anywhere near his body. Now, Fern has run away for a sprint. Oh, 
got a nice pass away there. Back on the inside to Mal Meninga. Fern has got, uh, obviously got some problems with his leg at the moment. McDonald, nice pass away there to uh, Mullins, is it? Yes, Mullins, the fullback, has uh, just weaved his way with that great speed of his. Just weaved his way in for another magnificent try, really a great try. They're starting to... They put the uh, Illawarra side on the rack at about 20 points to two. They have now got them stretched right out and they're turning the screws even further. The score is now 36 points to two. If you didn't think round one was going to be inspiration enough, have a look at this. Once again, the Raiders just making a mockery of the Illawarra defence. This is McDonald with the ball, slips it away. Mullins just showing that turn of speed that he's got. He's quick and puts the ball down for yet another Canberra Raiders try in his second of the match. And the Raiders getting right away with the game. Mullins again. Simon in pursuit. Can't get to him. That's all there was to it. David Ferner was down in back play. I think he had a, uh, had a cramp in his leg. He seems to be all right now. He'll come up to take this shot. Just outside the Illawarra 22. He's probably 10, 15 metres in from the touchline. On the grandstand side here. Once again, not an easy kick. He's bounced it off, off every upright on the ground so far. I shudder to think where this one's going to come off. Just outside the quarter, this is starting to get to be a simpler type of a kick. This is about 11, uh, about 14, 15 metres in from the sideline. A metre out from the, uh, the, the quarter line. Very slight breeze seems to be favouring him ever so slightly. Moves in. He's got it. I think that's his seventh goal. Thirty-eight points to two. I believe he's kicked seven goals from seven attempts. So uh, there's another player that's had a, a very, very good game because allowing for the fact that at least four of those kicks were from the sideline and two of them came off the woodwork, he's had a most interesting day. And he's earned himself an early shower too. He's been pulled off, taken off the field. Well done, David Ferner. Now McDonald brings the ball back. Can they get another one in? We've got about four and a half minutes remaining. The scoreline, 38 points to two in favour of Canberra. This is Fritz. Fritz about two metres from the quarter line now. Now Canberra will be setting themselves to move the ball uh, in some way even though they're in their own quarter, because they do believe, as we believe, that uh, your own quarter is a very good area to score tries from. Not like some of the coaches in Sydney who expound the views to players that uh, they consider that they're not entitled to pass the football in certain areas. That kick went downfield. Rialo's taken nicely. That's uh, Craig Bellamy out there. Yes, I reckon. In, in place of David Ferner. Craig Bellamy, a very talented uh, reserve come first grader, has uh, played lock at 5 8, played centre, played fullback. He's been uh, in a lot of positions for uh, the Raiders. Luara, still persisting, still being persistent, but uh, their mistake rate has been horrendous. And uh, their tackling, some of the tackling has, uh, has been, well, to coin a phrase, pathetic. Cross. Simmons out to Neil. Well, McDonald was able to defuse that kick that uh, came to him. The fullback moved forward a couple of yards. Just beat McGregor. Stewart comes away with a good probing run that uh, got him about 15 metres. There's Wood on the tear. Coin, offloads, Walters, Osborne, Osborne again, and he's waited too long, got the pass away, and it was a forward pass, 
And that uh, put that down to over enthusiasm of uh, Osborne trying to uh, be more involved. He had the opportunity to pass just prior to making that em uh, embarrassing error. And uh, that would have been the right thing. The first option that he thought of was the right one. As he's sitting off upfield, I think he saw that try line again, Rex. Yeah, I'm sure he did. It's always the, uh, the great temptation to go and do a little bit more when there's a try on. They were a, a thoroughly well-beaten side today. They haven't stopped trying. I ha I'm not talking about their courage, but they are a monumentally uh, beaten side today by a, a team that has played well, but uh, really it's been just a couple of players that have played exceptional football. Stewart. Stone has had a very, very good game. Brett Mullins, their fullbacks, had a game. Mal Manning has done very little. He scored a try, but uh, he hasn't put his imprint on the game at all. I'm not being critical of him. I'm just suggesting that uh, Canberra have won it because they're a considerably better football team than uh, Illawarra on today's fall. The kick will come. It's a little short one. Be taken, but they were all in front of the kicker. The referee suggests they were uh, offside. And so we start the countdown now down to the last 40 seconds. The Canberra Raiders spinning the ball wide. This is McDonald. Scoreline of 38 points to two. It has been a comprehensive win to the Canberra Raiders side this afternoon. We're hoping to knock off a couple of those teams that are in the finals hunt as the season draws down to a close. We'll face a couple more over the next few weeks too. This is Coyne. Well, I'm glad Manly don't have to meet them. I promise you that. Little kick went too far for Wishart. Wishart was able to uh, get the ball. The hoodle has gone. And there is a monumental win to the Canberra side by 38 points to two. There have been six tries and seven goals in the Canberra tally and one penalty goal, a solo effort to uh, Illawarra. Wishart kicked that goal. For the Canberra side, Mullins, Meninga, Mullins scored two, Meninga, Croker, Coyne, Woods scored tries and Ferner has, I believe, Correct me if I'm wrong, seven goals out of seven attempts. Seven from seven for David Ferner. So we'll take a short break and uh, we'll come back with the wrap-up of today's match. Canberra Raiders 38, Little Warrant 2. <laughs> life you've been filling in forms. Sign here and you're off. Sign here, Sam. In triplicate. Sign here. <laughs> so you'd expect to do the same for a green slip. Get MMI's green slip with its very competitive rate and you won't have to fill in any forms. Just call. Amazing. 008 027 268. The amazingly simple green slip from MMI. The quality standard in insurance. All the flavour and taste of the country now comes in a very convenient way. New Country Cup Soup from White Wings. A country cup full of rich, creamy, country-style soup. 
topped with crisp, crunchy croutons. White Wings Country Cup. The taste of the country in a cup. Introducing the new Holden Jackaroo V6. With 19% more power than Pajero. And more space than Patrol. The all-new Holden Jackaroo V6 four-wheel drive. At your Holden dealer now. While you look after the health of your body, Palmolive's Infusion Shampoo strengthens and protects to improve the health of your hair. Palmolive, for the health of your family's hair. And with the telecom tower pointing skywards in the background, pretty much where Illawarra's semi-final hopes have gone this afternoon after a comprehensive defeating at the hands of Canberra, 38 points to two. Running through the stats for Canberra, the tries, Mullins two, Meninga, Croker, Coyne, Woods one each, David Ferner, magnificent with the boot, seven from seven, the scrum seven and the penalties five. The Illawarra scorecard, and it doesn't look too good. The tries nil, the goals just the one from two for Rod Wishart. The scrums, they won nine of those and the penalty six, so they did have the ball at certain stages. We'll have a quick look at uh, a couple of the tries from the second half. First one to Jason Croker, which was scored just after half time. Sean Hoppy swinging the ball away there from the dummy half position. Now we see Clyde running into a gap. He gets it away to Meninga, who finds an even bigger gap out to Croker. He comes back on the inside. It says Noah won't. Two fence, and over he goes. Jason Croker, a magnificent try there. The two fence really proving the difference. This second try now to Gary Coyne. We see Hobby on a characteristic run down the sideline, which he did all afternoon. The ball back on the inside to Gary Coyne. And Coyne, just the one fend, turns around, looks for support and says to himself, I'll put it down myself. The third try of the second half. And we'll see right now, Stone out to Croker, who takes off on a run down the sideline. He looks back inside, runs round behind David Boyle. Now here he gets the ball away to David Woods, who had just come onto the ground. He'd been on the ground for about five seconds. He goes over next to the post and makes it easy for David Ferner with a conversion attempt. Right now, we'll whiz down to the sideline. Michael Bolt talking to the Raiders captain, Mal Meninga. Mal, certainly comprehensive victory out here today. Uh, you were certainly out there to uh, dint uh, Illawarra's final five hopes. Yeah, I guess we, you know, we're not in... I haven't got a chance to make the five now, so we've still got to play as well as we possibly can. You know, everything went for us today, you know, nothing went for a while, unfortunately, but that's the way the game's, game goes. You know, they gave us a fair old flog in the first round, so we owed them something. Yeah, it's certainly, it's, a, it's a, the payback time of the year. It's a, got a, three more games to go. Uh, the way, the, the form, when you finally get your team back on the paddy together, the Canberra Raiders still got it. Yeah, mate, we, you know, we always knew we got the team for the year, but, um, you know, unfortunately, whether there's injuries or rep season, back up from rep football games, you know, it's been made it difficult for us and have a huge turnover of players this year. We've got some young guys coming through, lacking a little bit of experience at the moment, but um, gaining that confidence as, a, as a, the season comes to an end. And, uh, you know, we're all planning for next year. Ricky Stewart's game today, once again, his kicking game has uh, certainly turned a lot around and you yeah. just went from there. Well, he certainly helps us, doesn't he? You know, he comes out and he, he kicks, finds touch for us, have a bit of a break, and uh, we can continue from there. And uh, without Ricky in the side, I doubt uh, we could play as well as we could. So uh, that full marks are sticky today. Thank you. Enjoy a nice hot shower. And so that's what we'll leave it from the Bruce Stadium. A 38 points to two win to the Canberra Raiders on behalf of the commentary team, Michael Bolt, Rex Mossop, and myself. It's good night. <laughs>
This has been a Win Television Network sports presentation. This football coverage proudly brought to you by Everlast Automotive and MMI Insurance. The program classification symbols used by this network are designed to help you. Classification symbols are displayed in the bottom right hand of your television screen. AO, adults only, means a program is not suitable for children. PGR, parental guidance recommended. Suggest parents decide whether children under their control should watch that show. G means a program is suitable for the entire family. C programs are made specially for children. And P classification is suitable for preschool children. Kick up your heels and have a good time with the show that'll have you laughing. Australia's funniest home video show. And at 8 o'clock... We were talking to Anna. What about? None of your business. Sex. The taboo topic that everyone's talking about. Oh, talking about boys. Mm -hmm. I remember that look. Tracy's got a very long memory. And it's Anna who asks all the questions. Maybe I could send her to her room till she's 21. All together now. Unreal! 8 o'clock Tuesday on Wind Television. meant to be ZZ. ZZ Top, that is. ZZ Top's greatest hits, plus the new single, Viva Las Vegas. All your favorites, plus a heap more. and stop. Southern Fried Boogie at its very best. Yeah, CZ Top's greatest hits. Get it while it's hot. Oh, you're in a bad way, sport. We'd better get you to the hospital. <laughs> now, don't you worry. We'll get you there. No sweat. But we haven't lost anyone yet. You never know what the days are going to bring. I don't do it all on my own. When I start my shift, I have a word with him. We're a sort of a team, God and me. He's me, mate. 8.30 Tuesday. <laughs> Come on, Kel. There's got to be plenty of videotapes of you lying around. Kelly does Hollywood. Is that me? It's a cartoon, honey. In a special one-hour episode. We're irresistible. Married with children. 8.30 Tuesday on Wind Television.